All right. Yep, you read the title right. And that is something that is going to happen. Uh, I know this episode is going to be a lot different than my other episodes. It might be a little bit shorter, but this is something I wanted to talk about. And I've been telling a lot of people about it lately. And I've been getting a lot of like really interesting responses, good responses. And so I figured, you know what? Time to take it to the internet, okay? So we're on the internet talking about it. But this is something that's coming up very soon. December 20th, which is 18 days from right now, I'm getting that hair surgery done. And I'm talking about it because I feel like a lot of people are just not comfortable talking about it that like either need it done or maybe they've like thought about getting it done. Um, they're nervous, which I'm nervous right now. I'm probably going to mess up talking midway through this because I'm still nervous about it. Um, it's not a hard thing to talk about. I feel comfortable talking about it for sure. Uh, just cause I know that I need it done and I'm not like insecure about it or whatever. Um, most people that know me, I feel like either can tell that I need it done or if not that, then have noticed like my hair thinning out on the top of my head. So I want to talk about that a little bit, how that happened on here. Um, that kind of goes back a little bit and it's kind of a little mini story. So I'll tell you that. And then I'm going to talk about the actual like surgery, like what I have to do before it and what I have to do like after it and how I'm going to feel during it, etc. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is make another one of these episodes after I have it and talk about that too, but like well after it because I'm going to look messed up after it <laughs> and I'm not going to be at home. So I won't be able to even make a video about it. But anyway, that's beside the point. Let's talk about this whole thing. Um, so first off, I probably don't even have the right. Let's see if the right, I have a sheet of paper with me right here. Let's see if the right name is on it. Nope. All right. Well, for those of you that don't, that are even new here, thanks for watching my podcast. Uh, normally it's a podcast where I sit down, talk to other people that do creative things. And then on occasion I do episodes just myself where I talk about what I want to talk about because it's my platform. Okay. So, um, Enough, enough of me beating around the bush. I'm going to start from the top. So, um, way back in, I think it was sixth grade. Yeah, sixth, sixth or seventh grade. Um, I think I would just sit in my desk a lot in class and like literally go like this, like pick at my hair at like one spot I just sat there picking at one spot over and over and like not even like I'd like pull my hair out and like be like scratching and like doing a bunch of that and I was doing it so much that it became like a habit I was doing it like every single class I would literally sit there and just be like and I'm I don't think anyone said anything to me I think I just had it was like a nervous twitch or I was just getting anxious in class. I don't know what it was, but I was nonetheless doing that. And it I did it so much that like halfway through the year, I like picked a bald spot on my head. And like I don't okay, when I say this next thing, I don't want people commenting being like, "Oh, I'm so sorry." Cuz I'm not like pissed off about it. <laughs> like this is just something that happened and then I dealt with it and I'm done with it, okay? So this isn't, this is not looking for people to go, oh, sorry, that happened to you. Um, but people would literally be like, yo, you you have a bald spot, bald spot. And like, I don't know, I can't think off the top of my head, but you can only imagine, let your mind run loose of the names that people probably called me for having a bald spot on my head in sixth grade, which is <laughs> in hindsight, pretty abnormal, you know? Not many people in sixth grade have a bald spot on their head. See, look, I'm already, I'm laughing about it, okay? Um, but that happened, and it was weird. And I was like, I went through, like, it was like another six months, I feel like, that I sat there thinking about, like, what, like, what am I going to do? <laughs> 
you know what like what am i gonna do to get my hair back and i just kind of like let it chill out for a little bit uh some of my even like good friends then were giving me sh- literal shit about it being like yo you have a bald spot and i was like yeah yeah i know the sky is also blue too you know that because they were it's like dude it was just you know you know how it is you don't like being called out on something that you know um so that happened It grew back, and then I think I kind of did it, like, halfway again, and then someone called me out on it. Someone was like, dude, like, you need to stop. It might have been one of my parents, honestly. I, like, started doing it, and they're like, you need to stop doing that. So I stopped because it was coming back, and then my hair kind of, like, grew back. Not all the way, though. I don't think it ever grew back all the way. It was always, like, because I was, like, pulling out hair, so it was, like, there's only so much your hair that can grow back, right? Um... And then, I don't know what, there's like a gray area for me between like 7th or 8th grade and like, le- no, 3 years ago, maybe about 3 or three or 4 years ago. In that time span, I'm 20, 26 right now, um, so yeah, anywhere from that like 7th, 8th grade time span till now, I don't know what happened at all, like my hair, I guess, just started to, like, thin out on top of my head. Um, I don't know if I can, if you can see it. You might be able to see it if I go like this. Um, you probably see it there, maybe. Um, but my hair on the top of my head just started, like, thinning out. I don't know, like, why necessarily. It just started happening. And I think it's because I'm getting older. And it's because of genes and, like, gene pools. Um, that's just what happens. Because jeans are a crazy thing. Not not the pants, but you know what I'm talking about. Your jeans. Um, and yeah, so my hair just started thinning out. I, I'm lucky, right? I'm lucky that happened. Um, so I saw it happening, and then I, my hairline just started getting like way worse. Like over the last, like I don't know, four years, something like that. It just started getting worse. You can probably see it right here in this a little bit. Right there. And I think it's on this side. A little bit too if you can see that um but yeah it just started getting worse and i was like this is weird and okay in hindsight like a couple of years ago i was definitely wearing hats more frequently it got to the point where like people actually like nowadays people see me and they're like oh you're the guy with the hat like which is like such a random thing because there's a lot of people that wear hats you know um but I did start wearing hats more frequently. I will I will admit to that. I know it's a hard thing to admit for people, but I did start wearing hats a little bit more. And then like consciously, like two years ago, I was like, oh shoot, I'm like I like realized that I'm wearing hats more. And I was like, people are probably gonna catch on that I'm wearing hats, right? So I started like not wearing them as much and like feeling more comfortable not wearing one again. And then my hairline got worse and I was like, this doesn't look good and doesn't feel good because people notice it and it's okay if someone notices, you know, we're not perfect. We got, we all have problems. It's okay if someone notices it, but I would wake up in the morning and I would see it and it kept getting worse. And I was like, Hey, I don't like that. It doesn't feel good. Um, and then it got to the point where I was like starting to like push my hair a little bit like this like just push it forward even like i do that now sometimes still i'm just like "Mm, mm, mm," to try to hide it (laughs) um but you know it's nothing i can control so i think i try to control it by doing that (laughs) um so i'm not going to be able to get rid of it that way so what i started i started like looking up a bunch of stuff on like how to get rid of it and i was like reading all these internet articles and people are like, oh, yeah, you got to eat more of this food and you got to eat more of this and you got to buy these DHT blockers and you got to do all this and da, da, da. And I was like, I actually started trying to eat some of the things that it said, but it literally didn't help. I think it was just like in my head that it would help. Um, so then I, I think I like brought it up to my parents at one point and I was like, all right, this thing's kind of getting out of control. And they, they're they like, yeah, well, we noticed it too. Um and then, whoa, voice crack. Oh, age 26, my voice is cracking. Um, 
so then they we like talked about it and they told me about this place called restore it's like you see those ads all over the highway um they, they do they work on people's hair all the time and i was like all right well i guess if that's the route that like you know i'm gonna go on and they're gonna send me on that route then i'm fine with that right any like at this point i was like anything to help it because if I don't do anything to help it, then I'm just going to be older and it's just going to get worse. I'm going to be like 35 with no hair. <laughs> don't want that. Um, so I think that's why I'm getting it done. Not because I'm like insecure and like afraid of blah, blah. Like, yeah, it sucks. I hate waking up seeing that. It sucks. Yeah, I'll admit that for sure. But I don't care that people see it. If they want, to, someone wants to judge me and be like, that guy's hairline's receding. Cool. Don't care. I seriously don't care. Do it do it someone wants to hate me someone wants to say they don't like me because of it do it hey do it okay i don't care but um i just don't want to be bald at age 35 or whatever that's the main the core of the reason why i'm getting it done so uh yeah this whole procedure is crazy i obviously haven't got done yet so i'm talking about before it uh, but there's been a lot of things that have gone down before, like, actually having to get this procedure. So I went to Restore, and they told me I needed this thing called PRP, which is, like, something that I've been getting for the past, like, year, maybe year and a half. Maybe longer than that. Maybe, like, year and a half. It's, like, this thing where they... I go in, like, every other month, and they take a needle, and they, like, find a nice, like, spot where there's a lot of blood in your arm, and they poke a needle there, and they hold... Okay, hang on. I'm sorry. I probably should have said trigger trigger warning for, like, if you're sensitive to, like, blood, uh, trigger warning, skip past this part. But it's not too gory. Just letting you know. Um, if, here's what they do. So they, not if, if they, I almost said if they take a needle. Uh, what they do is they take a needle in the most, like, bloody spot. And then they like poke it and then they let it like they're they have like a machine or something or they just they take your blood and then they put it in this machine with this vial and it like spins around and then they have it in this like little syringe of some sort or needle or whatever and they like poke they take they do like 16 or 17 pokes in the top of my head with it but it's like they inject that stuff the parts that I need hair and what it does is it like creates these like little pockets of like that stuff and it helps like spread out to different areas you need hair and it helps your hair it stimulates like your hair hair growth I don't have the scientific like explanation for it but that's based that's the crux of what it does um so I've had that and then when I was get like before I got that done they were saying like hey do you want this stuff called um finasteride which is like a hair pill and it basically is like if if you know about it cool um it's a pretty common thing that a lot of people that don't even have hair problems take to like keep their hair i guess that's what i'm coming to find out lately as i'm telling people um but yeah it's basically like this little pill and it has okay there's a lot of side effects to this pill. So if you look up like finasteride side effects on Google, uh, let's see, we'll go to keeps.com. That's like the one of the famous hair, one of the famous hair places. So they're not gonna put misinformation on their site. Uh, let's see, finasteride side effects. Oh. I got clicked, I clicked, I got, they clickbaited me. They clickbaited me. Um, finasteride side effects, here we go. All right. So these are like some of the main side effects of it. Um, it says depression or anxiety, dizziness, weakness, or feeling like you might pass out, headache, inability to urinate, pain in the testicles, runny nose, rash, um there's more hang on a couple more here um signs of allergic reaction skin rash itching difficulty breathing sexual side effects 
uh, swelling in the hands or feet, and swelling, pain, tenderness in the breasts, or fluid leaking. Okay. Um, this, yeah, so they're kind of gnarly side effects for this thing. And so when they asked me about it, I was like, at first, okay, I don't want anyone to take this out of context, but when I first got it, there was a little label on the side of the container that I got that said like, warning, this product can cause, um, this product can cause, uh, prostate cancer. It didn't say it's going to give me, it said it can. And so I asked the lady there and she was like, oh yeah, like it's pretty rare. She's like, there's, I think she said there was like a couple percent chance or something like that. So even then I was like, I don't even like the sound of taking something that can give me cancer, right? Even if it's like a small possibility. And so I like declined that. But now that I'm doing more research, like on it, I'm not seeing that side effect anymore, which is so weird. But then there is like another couple sites that do say it still. So I'm like, I'm like, what? Like, and then one of my friends told me it masks the side effects of that. So I don't know, okay? So don't take your information from me on this because clearly I'm not fully educated on that. But I'm just telling you what I heard and what I saw. So letting you know my experience. I'm speaking firsthand experience. Um, so anyway, I was like, nope, I'm not going to take that. And then what they did, I'll show you. I'll show you on video. They gave me this little, there it is. They gave me this little laser cap right here. It's got like little laser things at the bottom. And I'm, I haven't actually put this on my head in a while. I'm supposed to. But uh, hopefully my doctor doesn't see this. <laughs> um, but I have to put that on my head like a couple times a week and let the laser sit for like, I think it's like 30 minutes, 15 minutes. And then that's supposed to, like, supposed to help my hair growth. And it's a weird thing. You don't want to wear it out in public because you look freaking weird. Uh, so there's that. They also gave me this special shampoo. That I'm supposed to take. I'm supposed to take. I'm supposed to like, guzzle the shampoo. <laughs> um, they gave me this special shampoo that I put on my head, and I'm in the shower, and I like really have to like rub it in and then let it like do its thing. I don't know what it does, but it's supposed to help. And they gave me minoxidil, like a bunch of minoxidil, which is like stuff you can buy at the store anyway. But that's like their brand, which is probably better. Because I've had other kind before, like the foam kind. I've had other different kinds. Um, but I think I say all this to also say that like hair loss with men is like a very common thing. I think it's something that like people don't want to admit to. Cause like the more that I tell people about this, the more people that are like being like, yo, I actually have that problem too. Or like people are being like, Oh, I've thought about that. Like I'm not just saying that. Cause like two or three people said that to me. I'm saying this because literally like 12, 14 people have said this to me. Um, and I think it just, it's a hard thing for people to admit or like, I don't know. It's a hard thing for people to accept that they have the problem. And then like, even just talking about it, I feel like it's kind of hard. It took me a while to sit down and film this. Cause I like got up and like got water. I was like, Ooh, this is hard to film <laughs> Like straight up. This is a little bit hard to film. Not gonna lie. Um, but yeah, so they give me all those like different things. I've been doing all those things, except for this laser hat I've been kind of bad about, which I probably should be doing more of. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else I've been doing. No, I think that's it. They just tell you to, like, you know, just do those things, keep doing them. Oh, I was taking this pill. Uh, let's see. So there's a, there's a natural uh, finasteride pill uh where is it what is a natural form let's find it okay so there was this uh there's this dht i forget the name of it but it's a dht blocker pill and it was a more natural form of finasteride that doesn't have those side effects that finasteride does um and i was ordering that and i was taking it for a while because the doctor had told me I could take that. He's like, oh, if you don't want to take finasteride, you could try this. Um, DHT blocker pill. Let's see if I can find it on here. 
on Google. More on Google. Let's find it. Because I was taking it for a while. DH Natural DHT blocker. All right. Well, I don't see the one that I had on here. But you get the point. It was a different natural pill. That was chill. I kept running out of them. I took like, they were like fish pills. It was like four day and it was heavy. So I kind of stopped taking those. The, prob the problem is with all the stuff that you do for hair, you have to be consistent. So here, let's cut to the part of the surgery. Because that's what this is about. So I'm getting the surgery done December 20th, which means like a couple days before it, I'm chilling out. And then after it, I'm chilling out. So that's, I'm bummed that I chose to do this before Christmas because I probably won't want to be around like other family members during Christmas. Because I'm gonna, my, I'm gonna be like bald. They have to like shave your head to do this. I don't want to be looking weird in front of. I mean, I'd be fine with it, but I just, you know, you know how it goes. You can't be looking weird, and then people go, "Well, what happened? What'd you do?" And you gotta tell the story to all these people. I don't want to do that. It sounds like a living hell. I don't want to tell anybody about that. If they want to hear about it, they can watch this, and they can can learn okay um <clears throat> whoa voice crack again that's another thing with this hair surgery you actually lose your voice prior to it <laughs> um i'm just kidding that doesn't actually happen it's a joke but uh what was i saying oh so i'm getting this done before christmas which sucks because of that i'm also leaving to florida like the day of christmas i'm gonna be gone for a while and i on this freaking sheet it literally says, I'm going to read you guys the stuff on the sheet, but it literally says right here, what to avoid? Prolonged exposure to sunlight for two weeks. Golfing, beach vacation, which is like anything I would do in Florida. So, hey, whoa, going to have to be inside the whole time. Um. So, <laughs> so anyway, I also say that to say that I'm probably not going to be working like a few, a few days before it up until like, I don't know, after it till like mid January, I'll probably work again. Cause I'm probably gonna be like out of commission, not feeling okay, not feeling good myself. They tell you on here like what you're gonna be feeling like after it, like the post. You're gonna be feeling itchiness, swelling, scabbing, redness, tenderness, pimples. You're gonna have an infection, numbness, minor pain, headache, dizziness. You're gonna be bleeding, hair shedding. You're gonna be like, dude, I don't even need to that. Okay, that was the last one, but like. Imagine me trying to work, feeling all that. Whoa, not happening? Definitely not happening. Whoa, I will not be focused on work. It won't be good. So I think by like the end of January, I'll probably be feeling better. Because I booked myself on something for the end of January, so I hope I'm feeling better by then. But uh, those are the that's what you feel after it. But anyway... So December 20th, I'm going to walk in there. They're going to... This is so scary. I just read this, and I'm, like, shaking from reading. I'm still... I read this, like, 20 minutes ago, and I'm still shaking after reading it. But here's what it says. Three days prior to procedure... This is not the scary part. I'll get to the scary part. Uh, is Three days prior to procedure is an ex extremely important that you eliminate the following things. Alcohol and caffeine. Whoa, I never had sip alcohol in my life, so I don't have to worry about that. Caffeine, I drink way too much coffee, so I'm gonna, it's going to suck. But, gotta do it. Stop any prescription blood thinners of authorized by your uh, prescribing physician. Stop the use of minoxidil. And I think they just said to, like, relax before it. So, that's what I'm going to do. Um, and then they said, day of. You have to come in wearing a button-down shirt and comfortable pants. Because you you can't be pulling the shirt over your head, you know? You, got, you can only unbutt. Because if you do that, you're going to move the hair follicles. Uh, so, that's why I have to wear a button-down shirt. And then we do a range. Someone has to drive me because uh, I'll be heavily medicated and not be able to drive like after it. Um, they said bring a large oversized zip up hoodie, adjustable baseball cap, or loose fitting hat. No beanie. Okay, didn't know that. Eat a light breakfast, shampoo your hair the morning of the procedure. Do not add other hair products. Okay. No cologne or body spray. They don't want to be sniffing you during the surgery. They don't want to smell you. Um, we have Netflix and Pandora. For you. 
Yo, dude, can't wait to watch, can't wait to listen to Pandora during it, dude. They, they're Spotify haters at Restore. They don't like, they don't like Spotify. They hate it. They're Spotify haters. So they want you to listen to Pandora. They better buy me a subscription, okay? Or I think they already have it. That's why they recommended it. But I, I don't like Netflix. Don't know if anyone knows that, but I actually don't. I watch it whenever there's something very important to watch. It's the only time I watch it because it's the only time I care about it. Um, wow. Bet you didn't know that. I barely. I have Netflix. I think I've turned Netflix on this TV. I've had this TV like, I don't know, six years. I think I've turned Netflix on this thing like four times total. Five times. Don't watch it. So I'm going to try to be on my phone. I'll probably be on Instagram. or Because here's the thing. During it, they're going to be working on your head, and you can be on your phone and do whatever you want. But the, this thing, this surgery takes eight hours to do. They're literally, what they're going to do is they're going to take hair follicles out of, like, probably the back of my head where there's more hair, and they're going to, like, pu- put them in other spots so the hair can grow out more so that I can, like, have normal-looking hair right up here. You know? That's what they're going to do. So... They're going to be individually working on it. I think they're doing like 1,200 graphs or whatever it's called, which is like an unfathomable amount. They're going to be working on my hair for eight to nine hours. I start 6 a.m. and I'm out by like four or five or something. Oh, dude, that's so much time. I When they're doing the PRP, I'm already like, they're like doing three. And I'm like, get me out of here. I want to leave right now. And I don't want to come back here. But then I come back every other month and they do 16. And it sucks. <clears throat> um, but hey, you know what? I'm also in a position that like I can get this done, so I can't complain about it. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people aren't in a position to be able to get this done, so I'm thankful that I'm in that position. I know a lot of people aren't able to get this done because it's it costs a lot of money. So this is not me complaining; it's me explaining how I'm feeling about it. You know, like, I can't just sit here and put up a front and be like, "Yeah, I'm excited. This is gonna be great." Because that's not fun. That's not fun for people to hear. They want to hear how I'm actually feeling. So, I'm explaining to that. Um, explaining to that, that did not make any sense. I'm explaining that, is what I meant to say. So, they're going to be doing that. They're going to be hacking away at my hair. I've watched a ton of other videos, like the Try Guy videos on this and stuff. And there's like a couple other guys that made videos. And some of their faces look messed up after it. And I'm really worried about that. I'm worried that my face is going to look really bruised and like, like this thing said, what did it say? Swelling, itchiness, redness, tenderness, pimples, infection, Jesus H. Um, yeah. So I'm worried about my face looking weird after it. So they're going to be doing that. And here's the thing before I got this done, before I'm like, I like, full and went to this i was scared i was like no i don't want to do this i was very scared and i was like no 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 i don't want to do this and just one day like a flick of the switch and i was like yep i'll do it i don't know why i don't know why i chose to do it but i did um no i'm scared of it and it's 18 days away which is like just a little over two weeks away um so anyway here's where i'm gonna go with this so basically there's they give you like they basically give you an ipad too that you can go on or i get my phone and they told me that i can be on it the whole time but then when i went in the other day the lady's like no they'll like put you on your on your like stomach for a while and i'm like yo if i'm on my stomach i'm not gonna see anything i'm not gonna be able to do anything but they're also gonna give me a pill so i'll be drowsy before it i'm gonna try to like not sleep the night before so that i'm like very tired during it so they're gonna basically make me so I feel extra sleepy and I'm fine with that if I fall asleep during this thing they said I can that'd be great I would love to fall asleep during this wake up and have this be done so that I'm not like seeing them do it because I'm so scared of needles I'm very scared of needles um so yeah I don't like I kind of don't want to watch these guys oh the scary part I didn't tell you guys the scary part so this is what's scary, is that I read this. Listen to this. We have a professional hairstylist on site 
who will give you a high and tight haircut. They will shave the sides and the back of your head and blend it up. This will be done with clippers without a guard. It will be shaved to the skin. Oh, that sounds so scary. Without a, that, a guard is like that thing so that your head doesn't get cut open. So they're just like, yep, they don't care if we cut your head. They're like, it will be shaved to the skin. Oh, that sounds so scary. That sound, that I think that's the scariest part of it all. <laughs> that's the scariest part. Without a guard? I'm shaking. I'm shaking right now. That's frightening. Um, but anyway, so I think I covered what's going to happen before it, what's going to happen during it. I'm going to be chilling there for eight hours while they do it. And then after it, here's what they said. So here's the post-op instructions. This is where it gets crazy. So they said, post-op instructions, day one to three, washing grafted area. Mix shampoo and water in a cup and pour over grafted area several times. Rinse by pouring water from the cup. Day four to seven, shampoo grafted area with a light circular motion using your fingertips. Day one to six, cup wash donor area. Uh, day seven, wash areas you did prior to your surgery. Use baby shampoo or conditioner for donor graft area. I didn't know that. I got to buy some of that. Day one to six, aloe vera gel on my head. Oh, that's going to feel so weird. I've never put aloe vera on my damn cabeza. Um, spray bottle, two to three sprays. Saline solution provided. Saline solution, that's like someone's solution. Someone named Saline, that's their solution. Haven't met her yet. Um, provided on graphs every hour while awake, day one to ten. Sleep at a 30 degree angle. So what if I'm sleeping at 35? And I'm gonna mess it up. I gotta I gotta bring a little little angle with me and I sleep and I gotta measure how many angles I'm sitting at. Um for 72 hours. And I gotta have ice packs, not on graphs, so I'm gonna have ice packs for my dang head, dude. So my head's gonna hurt. I gotta ice my forehead every two hours while I'm awake. So I'm not gonna be able to sleep after this thing. Experience any discomfort in the donor area may apply ice packs to this area. Good lord, man. I'm going to forget half of this stuff, dude. I'm like a lazy person when it comes to like big lists like this. Not with like work, but like with other stuff, like a grocery list or like with like a list of anything else. I'm like not, I'm like lazy. Like I know that it's there and I know I have to do it, but I still see it and miss it. So I'm scared that I'm going to forget it. I'm going to try my best to remember all this stuff. But that's what I'm going to be doing in all this time off. Like, after, I'm going to be doing all that stuff. So I'm not just, like, sitting around being, like, not doing anything. I'm, like, doing all this stuff. I'm freaking taking care of myself after it. So that's going to be a whole thing. I'm going to have to let people know when I feel comfortable. But I'm probably going to put this on my Instagram so that people see it. People know what I'm going to be going through for a little bit. Um, I say it like I'm going through, like, depression. Hey, it's not going to be that bad. It's going to be a good thing. I'm. This is what a lot of people have been saying. People are like, well, you're going to be looking good after it. It's going to be better. You're going to feel more confident. Okay, I don't feel... It's not that I don't feel confident right now. I feel confident. But, but, I'm going to get this done, and I'm going to feel better. So I think there's a difference between feeling better and confident, right? I, I'd, I'd like to think that. So, I'm going to feel better, because I want to wake up thinking about this. And this is another thing, too. They told me they can only work on, like, the front area of my head. I guess if they work on this back area of my head, it, like, like right now at age 26, by the time I'm, like, 30 or 35 or something, it grows funny or something. Then, like, it just looks weird with my haircut. So I have to, like, get the back area done, like, another time. I, I don't know, okay? I don't understand it. That's what they told me, like, 10 times. I keep asking, and they keep telling me that. So there's that that is of any concern to anybody maybe that's just the way the restore does it and other places don't i have friends that fl flew out to like turkey to get this done i have friends that flew out to like poland to get this done i've had friends that get this done like through like another company i've talked to a few people that got this done or people that are taking the medication or people that are doing this so it does make me feel better to know that other people are taking medication and i'm not the only one in this and that there's people that are thinking about getting this done so maybe you guys can use this as like a way to kind of look at what I've had, you know, 
what I've gone through or what I've like done maybe after the fact you can talk to me and then I can tell you about it and maybe you'll get it done. Um, I do feel like this might get a little bit more clicks than usual, more watches than usual. So again, if you're new here, if you hit that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. Got a cool little system going here. Um, some creative people and some interesting topics. Okay. So hopefully this has been like a very informative and perspective sort of thing for you guys. And hopefully it's enjoyable for you guys to hear me talk about this. I have written down on my phone, like a bunch more topics of stuff that I've kind of put, brushed aside, but I think they're good things to talk about because people don't talk about them enough. Now, I like to talk about things that people don't like talking about. I'm, a, I'm an open book, okay? So I'm trying to say. If you know me, I'm an open book. I don't like to, like, you know, put too much under the table for new people that I meet or whatever. Um, just kind of cut to the chase. So that's kind of why I'm making this episode, too. Um, if you guys have any questions about it, anything, leave comment on youtube uh if you know me personally you can text me uh let me know if you have any questions what i said is what i know i'm not like a genius of this i'm not a doctor i should put that out there as a disclaimer because i don't want people thinking i'm like freaking genius of this i'm just reading the little sheet they gave me i'm, I'm reading i'm reading a piece of paper they gave me that's one one piece of paper big so um i think i read everything on here to you guys i don't think there's like anything what to avoid oh they said to avoid swimming i didn't read that to you guys they said to, okay i don't smoke so they said avoid sm avoid strenuous exercise so i can't skate that's another thing i won't be able to skate i won't be able to skate for a while so i won't be able to like i won't be getting in front of a camera like after this to film videos for a while I won't be getting like in front of a camera to make a skate video. I won't be out skating. I'm just going to be a little hermit. I'm going to be a hermit on my phone. So I better have 10,000 Instagram followers. But <laughs> I'm, I'm healed up because, hey, I'm going to be on my phone a lot. Not that followers matter. It's just I'll probably be hacking away at that or something. I got to entertain myself somehow. Um, Yeah, so there's that. Maybe I can edit videos. You know, I don't know. Maybe if someone has some videos for me to edit or some footage or I don't know. If you have something for me to edit to keep me entertained and you want to pay me to do that, cool. Let me know. I'd be down because I'll be bored. Bored out of my freaking gourd, man. But anyway, I'm going to cut this episode because that's kind of everything. And I don't have anything else that I can think of that I can talk about. So if you enjoyed this episode, thank you very much. Um, let me know what else you guys like to hear me talk about. If there's any other things that you know are related to this you want me to talk about, let me know. Happy to answer questions, but for now, thanks for watching this Saul Good podcast. My name is Max, and I am the host of this, and I try to do this like every week when I can. So thank you, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.